Welcome to NASDAQ Trade Talks. I'm Jill Malandrino, Global Markets Reporter at NASDAQ. Joining me at the market site in Times Square, New York City, we have Dominic D'Alto. He's the Chief Investment Officer of Fixed Income at PNB Paribas. We're going to take a look at challenges facing bond investors. Dominic, it's great to have you with us at market site. Now, you know, going into today, even you know, a few days last week, where we've finally started to see a sell-off in the equities market, interest rates were plummeting while equity markets and credit markets were holding up. What was the bond market looking at that a couple of other asset classes were not? Yeah. Um, we like to think that we're usually a little bit ahead of, ahead of the curve, but the reality is, is that we, we read the same information that our peers uh, on the equity side look at. Um, but bonds tend to be much more the knee jerk uh, or the canary in the coal mine when it comes to taking risk off. Uh, typically what we see is that investors will look to the Japanese bond market and, and the yen in particular as their first hiding place. But because Japan is so close to the epicenter, it's really come to the U.S. Now, there are other things that are also making interest rates in the U.S. Uh, come down that have nothing to do with these fears. Number one, if you look around the globe, 15 or $16 trillion of government bond yields are negative right now. So from a relative value perspective, U.S. bonds look very, very attractive as well. And then there's a little wonky technical that also happens. When interest rates come down, certain fixed income investors, like mortgage investors, have to buy duration or have to buy the long end of the curve just to hedge their positions. So those three things together are really what has led the bond market. Now, equities are starting to catch up today, mm -hmm. but indeed, we'll, we'll probably continue to see uh, rates uh, come under pressure or bonds come under pressure. Yeah, I mean, you know, February 24th, we're sitting here in the morning, the market's been open for just about an hour and, you know, nearly 3% down on all the major averages. But going back to interest rates, can they continue mm -hmm. to fall? Well, they can because, um, or at least we believe that they can, and, and that's largely because nothing that has made interest rates come down right now are based on uh, any sort of economic facts or data. We still don't know how big this iceberg is, if you will. Mm -hmm. And so if we start to see economic data come in softer, so supply chains really looking as if they're going to be impacted in a more long-term perspective, or if we see these demands uh, demands for products from, from consumers continue to fade and, and people are sort of locked up in their houses, then we're going to start to see data. Now, we face on top of that the fact that we're sort of in the last few innings of a record uh, economic growth of, of over 10 years now. So um, our expectation is that uh, we would have seen uh, central banks begin to have to add more liquidity again. Uh, towards the end of the year. So for many, many different reasons, we actually think that it's much more likely that we'll see 1% than perhaps we'll see 2%. All right, now moving outside of the U.S., European corporates, do you think that continue to rally as well? Well, there you've got yet another technical. So you've got the ECB. One of the ways in which the ECB is injecting liquidity is, is buying the uh, European corporate credit space. So you've got you know, what, I, what I liken to the biggest hedge fund in the world buying, uh, buying an asset class. So we do think that that should continue. Um, also, again, because interest rates, as I mentioned, in Europe in particular, uh, all across Europe are negative, uh, corporate bonds in the credit space have sort of served as a proxy for, for government bonds. You can pick up a little bit more yield. So rather than buying bonds at negative 49 basis points, you can buy a corporate bond in Germany that's perhaps flat. So there'll still probably be quite a, quite a deal of, uh, of demand for that. Has, has this been one of the most challenging times for fixed income investors? It is. It's increasingly more challenging because, again, as more and more countries, government bonds in particular, which is the base upon which everything else is priced, is more and more negative, uh, it doesn't change the needs of our clients. They still need to uh, deliver yield for their pensioners. They still, in the case of an insurance company, still need to cover their liabilities. Corporates need to cover their liabilities. So the demands haven't changed, but the ability to satisfy those demands have certainly changed. It's gotten much, much harder. So are you looking at alternative areas to derive fixed income? We are. Um, we're, we're looking at, uh, rather than, than simply liquidity risk, we're looking at different parts of cap structure, uh, looking at uh, different types of securities where deep dive issue selection can actually make a difference uh, as opposed to just sort of the beta trade. All right, Dominic, thanks so much for joining us at MarketSite. And thank you for joining me on Trade Talks. I'm Jill Malandrino, Global Markets Reporter at NASDAQ.